Okay, welcome to part two of the video and uh, on this tolerance presentation. And we are uh, now on, uh, we have this is a slide we left off on of part one, just talking about general tolerances and how to interpret uh, what the tolerance would be based on the dimensions that are listed, assuming again, no specific tolerances, which we've talked about in the first part. Um, we would obviously use decimal places for that. Okay, so let's move on to our uh, fit uh, discussion. Okay, so tolerance is obviously provided uh, with parts that are going to be made and parts are going to be put together. And um, there, of course, that means they're going to fit together somehow. And there's uh, different ways that they can fit together or how they're classified as far as they fit together. So basically, you control this with tolerance. And the idea is that you want to get either one or two different types of fit, and there's a combination of these. So let's talk about these on an overall case. When you have a clearance fit, you're talking about a part that's got, uh, sorry, two parts that are being put together that are going to be, there's going to be space between them when they're put together. So uh, if there's a clearance fit, that means that there's going to be something that's going to be, for example, inserted in, maybe it's like an axle that's allowed to rotate, um, that could be put into another uh, hole on another part, uh, and if there's supposed to be space between them to allow, you know, to encourage um, the rotation of one part, that would be considered a clearance fit, okay? Its opposite would be an interference fit, and, inter and if things are going to have an interference fit, that means that, again, they're going to fit together, but there's not going to be any space. As a matter of fact, there's actually going to be a lot of friction between the parts that are connecting, and that's useful, obviously, if you don't want that rotation. If you want them to fit snugly and fit firmly together, um, that would be an interference fit, uh, whereas a transition fit, a transition fit is uh, one or the other, so you, it, which obviously would vary if you had a sort of a crossover between hole and hole and rod, hole and rod uh, or hole and axle, where it's possible for the axle to be larger than the hole, or possible for the hole to be smaller than the axle, or sorry, larger than the axle, axle, then um, you, you're going to have one or the other. So that's called a transition fit. If you hap if you happen to have that case, it's unusual for that to be true. Um, so usually it's one or the other. Okay, so let's talk about how to interpret which one of them. So here's an example where we've got, uh, just so you can understand what's going on here, this is an axle rod uh, that's going to be put into an opening on another part. Uh, so this is going to be inserted into this. Okay, so you have a series of linen dimensions and they're aligned, so you have to kind of tilt your head to see it, that's okay. Uh, the rod itself right now has an upper limit of 10.00 and a lower limit of 9.92. So that means, you know, the, the highest it can be is 10.00. When you look at the um, axle hole in the other part, the lowest it can be is 10.15. So there's always going to be a clearance between these two parts. There's always going to be space between them. And it could be as little as 0.15, or it can be as much as 0.33 uh, to indicate. So just, you know, for example, if this was 9.92 and this was 10.25, they would have a clearance of 0.33 uh, units, in the, probably inches in this case. So a clearance fit would always result based on these two. An interference fit, if we kind of make, make the dimensions a little different, an interference fit will always happen if there's going to be uh, the axle that's going to be inserted is a little bit larger than the hole. And again, that's to encourage friction and encourage firm, uh, a firm fit. So in this case, you're going to have an interference value of at least 0 0.02 or as high as 0.15, depending on which dimensions are true uh, between the parts. So an interference fit would happen there. Now, let's talk about the... Um, figuring this. Now, maximum material condition, let's define that first and what that means. Basically, when you manufacture a part, the, if it uses a lot of material or the most amount of material, that's considered its MMC, which will generally happen if you have an external feature like a plate or, a, or um, something that's going to you know, be fixed in place. Um, the MMC would just be the upper limit. So if you have a three, three inch long rod, Okay, three inch long rod, and that's got a tolerance of 0.01. If it was 3.01, it's still get, it's going to use more material. Okay, so that's called an external feature. Okay, now most of the, in most cases, an internal feature is going to be a hole. It's going to be a depression. It's going to be something where there's material that's taken away. Okay, so if it uses lower, uh, sorry, a lot of material, that means it's actually smaller because more material remains. Where I've, you know, so, it's a, so it's the opposite of, uh, of an external feature. So if, you've got, if you want the MMC of an external feature, you're going to use the upper limit. If you want the MMC of, the of an internal feature, you're going to use the lower limit. 
Now, its cousin, maximum material condition, is the least material condition, um, which is going to be opposite for both. So that's the case where the part uses the smallest amount of material. So if it's an external feature, it would be the lower limit. If it's an internal feature, it would be the upper limit. Okay. So again, if it's a hole, right? Think of the hole. If the hole is larger, that means it's using less material to be to produce. So it makes sense for the LMC to be uh, the upper limit for a hole. Okay. So that that that's a little confusing at times. What I've done is actually, uh, as of the posting of this, there's a picture on my whiteboard of a little kind of Punnett square uh, sort of thing as to which limit you would use if you're using if you're looking for the MMC or the LMC of an external or an internal feature so if you're watching this video you can see the on the board right there I've got it on there and I'll post a picture on Edmodo uh, so you know obviously we can use it again and see what happens okay now here's the difference or sorry here's the use of it for example uh, allowance is a num a numerical value that allows you to determine a whether you've got clearance or interference and also how much clearance or interference. So a really easy way to calculate this is if you calculate the MMC or take the MMC of the internal feature, the hole in this case, and subtract it from the MMC of the external feature. Okay, That's how you calculate allowance. Here's an example. So it's using that, using one of the uh, pictures from before. You see how we've got uh, the internal feature and the external feature. So the internal feature in this case is the on the right, it's the hole. Okay. So since it's a hole, the external feature, you would use the MMC, you would use the lower limit of that, of that feature. So we would use the 10.15, okay? 10.15. And then since we're going to use the subtracting by the MMC of the external feature, that's the rod, we would use the upper limit, the 10.00. So if we took the uh, lower limit of this and subtract it from the upper limit of this, that gives us a positive 0.15. A positive number indicates a clearance. Okay, when you're calculating allowance, the positive, the fact that it's a positive number indicates that you're going to have a clearance between these two parts. Now, take a look at our other example. Okay, sorry, there's a little bit. You can pause this and see. This is kind of like what I just said. Now, let's say we have, let's say we have the opposite. Okay, let's say we have a spot where where we have uh, potential interference. So the same, the same calculation would actually still apply here. External features MMC is the upper limit. Internal MMC is the lower limit. Okay. So we're going to take the MMC of the internal feature, which is 9.85, and subtract it by the MMC of the external feature, which is 10.00. Now notice when we subtract those numbers, we're going to get negative 0.15. So again, a negative number indicates an interference, whereas a positive. So that allowance basically will take the guesswork out of it for you. If you always calculate, or if you always calculate the allowance of a of the using the MMC of the internal feature, internal feature, and subtracting it by the MMC of the external feature, that number will tell you whether you've got yourself a clearance or whether you've got yourself an interference. Okay. Now, talking about the dimension tolerance, and we're almost done here. Okay. The general, the more specified the dimension, the tighter the tolerance. As a reminder, right? So. Precise dimensions and overly precise dimensions and overly tight tolerances will indicate increase manufacturing costs. So you always want to use a precision and tolerance that's necessary for the part to function properly. So if you're always looking for uh, an interference or always looking for a clearance, there's a way to use tolerances to control the fact that control that you would always get one of those two types of fits. But the more tolerance you have, the easier it is to manufacture, the less expensive it is, and uh, you know it's it's sometimes it's just a little bit of trial and error to make sure things work. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, the next video that I post will also will include sort of a walkthrough of some of the specific directions on the activity. Uh, remember, you will have class time on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, to work on this. But then on Thursday, uh, and Thursday I should say, no, I'm sorry, Thursday we're going to go into our next activity, okay? But hopefully having access to these videos at home or out of class or in class if I'm not here uh, is helpful. So enjoy, have a nice day.